So prison visits, everyone buzzes for a, a visit in prison. Um, what I mean by that is, you know, it's your it's your chance to get to see the outside world. Uh, you get to see friends, family, relatives, you know, um, loved ones, people, you know, girlfriends, best mates, that sort of thing. Uh, it gives you a moment. I mean, a lot of pen, a lot of friends of mine would take the whole time to uh, just eat chocolate, eat food, because you can go and get some nice snacks from the vending machine and things. And uh, um, it'll be a chance to just pig out on food with your with your family. Um, but for other people, it was, uh, you know, maybe a, a chance to see a family member or a friend who you'd fucked over. And you have to have that conversation with about, you know, why you're back in prison again or, um, you know, how they're, how they're coping outside now. I've experienced visits from both sides. I've I've been to visit my uh, my older brother in prison. That was the first thing I I experienced when he was on uh, on on Portland. Um, it wasn't the Weir and it wasn't Portland prison. It was the Vern. The Vern is a they turned it into a, um, a foreign national prison after he'd been there. But um, yeah, that was my first experience of, of visiting someone in prison. Um, I was only about 14, 13 at the time. He was just getting out of prison and he um, he wanted somewhere to stay. So he, he got my mum to come up and uh, we took a five or six hour journey up to up to Weymouth and we uh, we went on a visit. Now, I don't remember much about going in. Um, I just remember it being really intimidating. And uh, then obviously once you get through, you get to see uh, get to see your family member, you get searched and everything. And obviously it's quite, from you know, from a, from a, an outsider coming into a prison, you are treated in a very formal way. Everything's quite scary, and uh, you know everything's quite uh, by the book. Um, they'll, they'll get a drugs dog out. They'll line you all, all the prisoners. Oh, sorry, they'll line all the visitors up um, on the way in through the visitor centre, and they'll, they'll run the drugs dog along down the line, so you, you know they can smell if anyone uh, um, has got any drugs on them. Now, I used to know the guy um, in Dartmoor who did the security. Um, and he would tell us that, you know, the drugs dog, <laughs> we, we knew as well as he did, did that the drugs dog didn't work 100% of the time. Um, it would miss stuff. Um, if you'd been sat in a car where people have been smoking drugs, then sometimes your clothes would hold residue. Um, other times, um, women, you know, bleeding because on their period, or if they just had a baby and they're still bleeding, um, the dog would pick them out um, because of that. And, uh, yeah. In my experience, my very first prison visit was when I was in Exeter and uh, my girlfriend came up and she was on a period at the time and the drugs dog pulled her out, um, which meant I had a closed visit for my very first visit in prison, which is a, uh, you'd normally get like a two hour visit, um, but on a closed visit, I ended up only getting something like half an hour um, or 40 minutes, something like that. And it's like the kind of visits you see in the in, the, in, a, in a film where, you know, there's a big thick glass partition in between you've got a row of prisoners sat one side and a, a row of inmates uh, sorry a row of visitors sat the other um, and you're in basically a little pod you don't have the little phone which would have been handy because you can't hear fuck all through the um through the plastic so you're sitting there trying to shout to the person on the other side whilst also you know you've got two or three prisoners sat either side of you trying to shout to their girlfriends as well so you just can't hear fuck all um i just remember sat there looking at my partner with tears in my eyes while she was sat there with tears in her eyes you know i'm sitting there trying to explain everything's going to be all right and you know that we can get through this and we can't even communicate effectively so it, it was it was a very difficult visit and it was a very difficult time um to go through to then obviously try and convince my girlfriend to come back up for another visit because i'm, I'm getting a bit ahead of myself here kind of when you're when you're there's when you're on remand you can get as many visits as you want you just have to book them in um, so someone has to phone up from the outside. You don't even have to send a visit in order out when you're on remand. Somebody just has to phone up from the outside and book it. Um, you want to book it a couple of weeks in advance because obviously, you know, the visits don't run all week. They only kind of run Thursday, Friday and the weekend sometimes, depending on what prison you're in. Um, once you're sentenced, then you only get, depending on what regime you're on, so either basic, standard, enhanced. Some prisoners have super enhanced. Um so when you're standard, I think you get one or two visits a month. Um, when you're enhanced, I think it goes up to something like three. So you can almost have a, a visit every weekend. Um, in uh, in Dartmoor, they do a really good thing where one visiting order covers all day. So they'll they'll open up the visiting room in the morning for an hour and a half, um, sort of an hour and a half, sorry. Um, and they'll open up the visiting hall again in the afternoon for another couple of hours. And 
on one visit in order you can pretty much spend you know a good chunk of the day with uh, with your family um that was something i haven't seen a lot of other prisons doing uh, which was good now with my offending um i'd pushed a lot of my family away so they weren't always the keenest to come up and see me um like i say my older brother was always in that crime it wasn't always possible for him to come up um my girlfriend we would always break up you know in the first few months of me being in prison so i was I wasn't tending to be getting lots of visits from her um and uh, i had a a strained relationship with my mum um because not only you know i'd have been kicked out of home for drug dealing and things um she had phoned the police on me for fighting at, at different times and we'd had a strained relationship growing up so she wasn't in a rush to come and see me either um so it'd only be occasional visits i'd get from people so it'd always be nice that someone wanted to come and see me but then you know, while you're in prison, you kind of get yourself into this mindset of being in prison and you kind of shut everything out. And the less you think about the outside, the, the easier it is to cope with the inside. Um, so sometimes when you have that visit, it just kind of opens up all those old wounds. You know, you can get to smell your family. You get to sit there and hold hands with your girlfriend and stuff. And, and suddenly it just becomes all too real that you're cut off and you're, you're kept away. Um, always drugs, violence they get into any part of the system so um we'll do drugs first uh, obviously prison visits is a way of getting drugs into the prison um it's a way that the outside meets the inside and uh, it's done on a touchy feely basis so it's um it's, it's it's an easy way of getting stuff in and i remember seeing boys being chased around the uh, the visiting room because they'd you know within the first couple of minutes of the visit a, a girl has passed something to a lad um the staff have spotted it and now that he's he's trying to either swallow it or get up his ass uh, <laughs> before <laughs> before the staff get hold of him. Um, so uh, yeah, they're chasing him around the visiting room. It's a bit like a Benny Hill scene. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he's he's, he's uh, obviously been dragged away then. And then um, so I know of people um, getting their girlfriend pregnant while on a visit as well um, because some visits. So again, going back to a private prison. Um, the visiting room is going to be a lot less strict than a, than a normal prison. So um, I know of a chap who uh, has, has fathered three children while he's been in prison just from getting his missus to sit on his lap um, during the visit. And uh, yeah, they, these things happen. <laughs> Prisons, uh, Exeter and Dartmoor is a lot, a lot more strict. So um, you're allowed an initial hug sometimes when they first come in no real kind of kissing and that sort of thing and the rest of the time you've got to pretty much just stay away a little bit of hand holding and that's it you're not allowed to kind of do anything that could be seen to be kind of passing drugs or anything like that it makes it very difficult because obviously if you're not into passing drugs then you're you know you're, you're limited to what you can do um, with your family members and your friends and things but uh yeah i mean you're in prison you want to visit what, what, what do you want um one of the funniest uh, jokes i ever heard in prison um you know people just cussing people out the window and uh it was always one that used to fly around a bit and uh, someone would shout to someone else, oh, your missus is so thick. Um, I sent her a visit in order and she tried to cash it in the post office. <laughs> now, I don't know. I don't know if that makes other people laugh, uh, but uh, that's always, it's always one that I heard early days in the prison and uh, it just, uh, it stuck with me. Your missus is so thick. I sent her a visit in order and she tried to cash it at the post office. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, now, violence in prison now when when i was there especially um prison visits were a place where you anytime when you get to see someone from another wing there is a potential for violence um and not only that but you get all the nonces in the visits as well um and especially in dartmoor you know where they are because they, they put them in a, in a separate area um so all the sex offenders and kind of people who are on the run um, will be in the visiting room with you as well so it's quite easy to just run across the room and and and, and fucking do what you need to do um, not only that, but obviously just after the visit, because a lot of people don't want to fuck their visits up. You don't want to be fucking visits up for other people. So sometimes it will kick off at the end of the visit or um, as they're going back to the wing. Um, now, there's even been murders in relation to visits. Um, I remember one of the boys, um, the Scouse gang that uh, I was part of in, um, in Exeter, uh, they were talking about a lad who had um, ordered a hit on a visit um, while they were in prison. So these two lads were both in prison. They ended up on a, on a visit and they'd seen each other in the in the visiting room and uh, it kicked off and 
just as the visitor left the prison, he was shot outside of the uh, the establishment. And that was a hit that was ordered on a phone inside the prison. Um, so, yeah, they were basically like, he's going to be leaving the prison this afternoon as soon as he does fucking shoot him. And, uh, yeah, I think he died from that. And there was a lot of repercussions because of that as well, because obviously the phone's in the prison system. And this hit's been ordered from the prison system. And, uh, you know, I remember because my, my pals were part of this, uh, obviously connected to the to the gang up, up north. I mean, uh, I remember there was questions asked of them. Um, down in Dartmoor about what was going on oh, down in Exeter sorry about what was going on so yeah I mean uh, prison is prison so every part of it is mixed up with every other part of it so the you know the visits um, end up being just as chaotic as every other part of the uh, the system now my girlfriend used to really dislike coming up on the prison visits and, and as you can imagine you know the trauma of that first visit where you know she was uh, basically pulled out of the line by the drugs dog and then told that you know treated like a, a, a criminal that she'd had drugs on her and everything and uh, you know um, we had to be forced into that closed visit so it was, it was very difficult for her to to want to come up and see me in future because obviously you know everything that was going along with that um, other visits would always be difficult I mean she would bring my brother up my older brother up sometimes and uh, you know my older brother's a, a proper criminal and, and she isn't and you know, I was in prison and it was it was just those awkward conversations <laughs> around the table with her, you know, her scowling at me and, and him wanting to kind of high five me for, you know, getting up to shit. And it was, uh, yeah, it was just very difficult. Now, um, once you progress through the system a little bit, um, in Dartmoor, you would get these kind of family visits. Now, a lot of prisons run these now for enhanced prisoners. Um, it's a great way of kind of keeping prisoners um, on the straight and narrow because it's it's something you can hold over them again um, now a family visit is is a special day that they will open up the visiting hall for all day so you can go up there nine o'clock in the morning till sort of five in the afternoon you don't have to come back to the cell um, you uh, you're there with your family so it's great if you've got kids or you know just like families who need to travel to come and see you that sort of thing um, and again if you've got good family connections or friends then it's it's great um for me, again, it was just another source of pain because I, my family had pushed me away and I'd pushed them away. So whenever these family visits would come up, I, I wouldn't be on them. Um, you know, I'd have to watch all the lads getting their, you know, going and seeing their families and, and this and that and getting all their clothes and games and, and whatever else on visits and then coming back to the wing buzzing and talking about it all and all the food they'd eaten and all this shit. And I'd just be sat there being miserable. Um, <laughs> but that's my own fault. I, I, you know, I pushed everyone away. Um, I made my own bed. Um, but especially on the, the resettlement wing in Dartmoor, um, because the wing was the, the focal point, um, they made a big deal about it. So they would set up a session where your family could not only be in the visiting room, but you could go back to the wing with your family and you could show them around the wing. You could uh, show them your cell and all the rest of it and, uh, and just basically see, you know, you'd have an hour, half an hour on the wing where you'd be able to kind of just show them how you're living, basically. Um, now this was an opportunity that was taken by many prisoners um, to bone their misses. <laughs> so you would have half the prisoners uh, with the doors pushed to, um, boning their misses in the in the visit in, in the uh, on the wing, and uh, the other half of the prisoners either on babysitting duty with kids and uh, mums and dads and little brothers and that sort of thing, <laughs> showing them around the wing, or just standing in front of the door making sure none of the staff um, came down looking about while you're uh, while your balls deep and your misses. Now, this is what particularly funny for one of my pals um, because his missus had just had a car crash um, like a, a few days before the visit. Um, so she was probably fucked up. She was in one of those neck braces and like had her arm out at 45 degrees on the side. <laughs> and he was just like, fuck it, you know, you, we, we haven't seen each other in a couple of years. You know, you're, you're coming down to the cell, we're boning. And she was just, <laughs> he must have been in agony. <laughs> but she, yeah, she did it and because uh, she's, a, she's a good girlfriend. <laughs> So that's the um, you know that was the full range of the visits there. So you've got everything from um, your closed visits where it's you know like like you see in the movies to your normal visits um, where you can you know in private prisons get someone pregnant um, straight up through to the uh, the enhanced visits where you, you know you get your family down. Now again on the resettlement wing everything's a little bit more different down there. Um, once you've worked your way fully through the system and you've got your um, your DCAT, you can start having town visits and home leave. OK, now this is very rare in the prison system, very rare. It's it's exclusive for kind of DCAT prisons. You're, the only time you'll ever get a home leave um, in a normal establishment in a CCAT or worse um, would be if someone's dying 
and you know you, you get a couple of days at home to go and say goodbye and that sort of thing and it, it has to be you know a, a immediate family it can't be a grandparent or something like that um that's the only time you're ever going to get home leave from prison generally um unless you're on a decat wing now part of this decat wing is you have to work and you have to do everything and you have to jump through all these hoops um but once you get to the decat then you can start going out on a saturday um and you go out from was it 10 o'clock in the morning something like that maybe half nine in the morning till uh, six o'clock at night um you're allowed 25 miles away from the prison um and luckily uh, plymouth is about 19 miles so you can go down to plymouth for the day um it's a great great uh thing to be able to experience you go out in your own clothes you take a bit of cash with you and you just go and spend the day with your family or your girlfriend or the friends and things like that now i know you're not supposed to um, but because I, you're out from 10 in the morning or whatever it was till 6 at night, I was able to go home. Um, so I could just jump in a car and, and drive the two hours home. Um, I'd spend the day down in Cornwall um, around my pals and, you know, uh, you couldn't drink or anything because you got a, a, you know, a drink test when you go and went back. But you were able to get, get round it. So you could have like a pint or two um, before you went back um, and you wouldn't get caught as long as you had it in the morning or lunchtime, that sort of thing. Um, so it, it was absolutely brilliant. Um, I remember sitting in a field in the sunshine eating chips and uh, just thinking I'm, I'm doing a sentence right now. Do you know what I mean? This is insane. And I'd have to hand myself back into prison. Um, that was always the worst bit of it. You'd have to go and, you know, a few minutes before the end of your time, you go and knock back on the door. The, the prison staff open the door and you and you, and you just walk back in. Um, you get a little search and then you go back down to the wing. Um, and then, you know, if you've been out with your girlfriend, you let your mate smell her finger. <laughs> no. Um, sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Um, so, uh, yeah, there's the whole range of visits. The town visits, obviously, being the best, um, and then ranging right down to the uh, the close visits. Now, obviously, you never want to be in prison, but visiting the outside world and visiting your family and friends is the best thing. Um, it can cause heartache though, because again, you go back to your cell, and not only are you feeling buzzing that you've seen them, but you're also feeling that little bit of guilt sorrow shame you know you might have seen your mum crying um asking you why you're doing this um you might have had to see your, your girlfriend asking you why you're putting her through this again you know you gotta listen to her talking about how she's struggling to pay the bills and uh how people are giving her shit in her family and telling them to leave you and uh you gotta cope with that you gotta carry that burden back to the wing view um and deal with all the bullshit on the wing but also deal with the fact that all your bullshit is affecting people on the outside as well. <laughs>